Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Jer I mean, Jeremiah. Genesis chapter 33. Now picking up from 32, remember we left Jacob wrestling with God. And we pick up from 33, and Jacob lift up his eyes. He just fought with God. He got up, he's limping, and looked, and behold, Esau came. So he's fighting with God, picks himself up. Oh, man, ow. Thanks a lot, God. Oh, boy. Here he comes. That's the real story. I'll bless you, Jacob. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot, Lord. My leg hurts. Oh, boy. I was hoping he'd die in a way or something. Behold, Esau came, and with him 400 men. <sighs> and he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel. Leah, take your boys. Rachel, take your son. And unto the handmaids. Now watch Rachel. I mean watch Rachel. Watch Jacob here. Now this is not Isaac and Rebekah. What is? He put the handmaids and their children foremost. And as you're looking towards Esau with 400 men coming. He puts the handmaids and their children. Dan and I forget the other one. Puts them closer to Esau. Esau is going to come to them first. And Leah and her children after, they're in the middle. And he takes Rachel and Joseph, they're in the back. So the handmaid and their boys, if Esau does mean harm, they're going to die first. Leah may get a chance to get out of there with her boys. Uh, Rachel will be protected by, by Jacob. That's what it is. He's still got that love for Rachel. But he doesn't really have much. He kind of loves Leah. He's got her in the middle, but he's got the handmaids up front. <laughs> so he's got a little love for Leah by now. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground. So he goes in front of them. And he's going to go meet Esau until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. This is not what Jacob suspected. He bowed seven times until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, and fell on his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. This is not what Jacob expected. And this is not what we would have expected. The last time we left Esau, he's angry. And the reason that Jacob leaves is because of the anger of Esau. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children. But they're not that far away. Who are those with thee? And he said, the children which God has graciously given thy servant. It gives God the credit. Then the handmaids came near. They were the front ones. And they and their children, Dan and the others, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near. She's the next group. And bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel. So he puts the boy first. She puts the boy first. And they bowed themselves. And he, this would be Esau, what meanest thou by all this drove? These animals that he sent before verses 15 to 18 and 32. Remember, there are three groups of animals. There were, each group had, you know, the, the sheep went first, then the goats, then the cattle. They were separated three times, three sets. And he said, Jacob... These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. 
keep that thou hast unto thyself. Jacob said, No, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I have seen the face of God. Boy, is he really buttering this thing up. And thou, yeah, and thou was pleased with me. Take, I pray thee, my blessing. This is brought to thee because God has dwelt graciously with me. It's true. And because I have enough. And it's like, here, take it. No, I don't want it. You, you take it. No, I'm giving it to you. I don't want it. Will you take it? No. I'm not going to take it. And he urged him and he took it. And this is an oriental custom. To American, it'll be like, you know, what's the what's the vow? And it's the oriental, the Chinese, and Japanese do the same thing. It's you know, here, take it. They don't rush things. They play it out to the fullest. How far are you willing to go before you know I'm going to take this? That you're finally going to be willing to give me? How much time are we going to spend in talk before we do the business? And that's one of the mark of, of, of the Middle Eastern and the Oriental people is time. We got all the time in the world. And America, as you know, we got the clocks, we got the, the calendars, we got the dates, we got, you know, it's very cool, very relaxing here. Esau would have taken it, no matter what. But he's playing gracious, he's playing nice, they're being friendly, they're, they've been away from each other so long. And, yeah, okay, I'll take it. No problem. Thank you. And he said, let us take our journey and let us go and I will go before thee. You know, let's get going. Let's head to, and what the passage will be, let's go down to Seir, down south. Now, I emailed you two and I will put on the video. I can't do the audio. And I'll put my email address. I have a map that I emailed and that I can email to you and put on the video of what's going on here. From where Jacob left Laban to where he wrestles with God to when he goes to Succoth and then when he finally goes to Shechem. And it's remarkable when you see how far Esau has gone to meet David, David, Jacob. I'm getting names wrong today. And with 400 men, you would be like, okay, yeah, why? Because remember, Esau is way down at the bottom of the Dead Sea. That's his there. Along the, the east coast of the Dead Sea, down south of the Dead Sea. That is Esau's land. That's where he is living now. Jacob is up north. He's along the Jordan River. North. And when he gets word that, you know, 401 men are coming. And how far they're coming from. You gotta quit. Okay, what is the motive here? Is he going to kill me like I last remembered? And Esau was mad. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now. Oh, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong spot. Where am I? Oh, nay, I received the present. Uh, verse 13 He said unto him, My Lord knoweth that the children are tender, young. Okay. Joseph would be the youngest one. And the flocks and herds which with young are with me. So there are animals that have had animals along the way. Remember little Jacob's little thing about having the animals in front of the troughs? Well, those animals have produced animals. But this is a long journey. Animals that conceive for Jacob's flocks and herds on the way have conceived <coughs> since that time with with the with the pulling of the <coughs> excuse me of the, of the trees and all that those animals are having animals so this is a long time if okay herds with young are with me if men should overdrive them force them one day all the flock will die that, that looks like a true statement, right? That's true. If you overdrive your animals, they're going to die. But that's not the point here. Galatians 6, 7. Let's go back to 25, 32. Chapter 25, verse 32. 
And I'll show you Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. And you wouldn't believe what this remark goes on here. Now, we know what happened in 25, so we'll just read the verse. Well, what Jacob says here is, if we overdrive that flock, they're going to all die. Now, watch this. 25, 32. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point of to die. Jacob just quoted to Esau what Esau said to, to Jacob about that birthright. They're going to die. Hmm. I don't think the servants will allow them to do that. But but he's using it as an excuse too. I'm not going to go with you, brother. Now maybe he can, maybe he sees something he saw that, you know what? No, 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 no. You go to your home. I'm going to my home. He's not willing to go with his brother. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant. And I will lead on softly, according as the cattle that goeth before me, and the children be able to endure, until I come unto my Lord, unto Seir. And that's a lie, because he doesn't go to Seir. And when you look at that map, uh, you can see that he goes south, goes southwest, then boom, he goes west, right into the promised land. He goes nowhere near Edom. He lies to his brother. And I've got to wonder if this lie he tells Esau with the family later on. Oh, well, look at that. Jacob was telling me he was going to come down. He was going to meet me. He never showed up. So Jacob has lied twice to Esau. Once to Isaac, his father, about the birthright. Now he's lied to Esau about, hey, you know, come on down. We'll go down. We're going to go very slow. As long as the cattle can handle it, as long as the children will handle it, we'll head on down there. But his boys are pretty much strong by now. We read a couple chapters earlier. He's helping them with the herds. I mean, they're not in diapers. Well, some of them, Joseph's probably in diapers, if they wore diapers. But they're, they're a little grown in age, and they're helping him with the animals. So they're pretty rough, tough children. And Esau said, Let me now leave with thee some of the folk that are with me. 400 men. I don't know how many would be out of it, but... And he said, What need is thee? What need is it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. He's been 20 miserable years with Laban. I'm not getting into that again. Once we depart, like Laban and I departed, I'm going my own way. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. He's going down by the Dead Sea. A land that God said, that's their land. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth which is west of the Jordan River, and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Now that's interesting. That comes up a few times in the Bible, the booths. It's kind of like a temporary shelter. It's not something that you, you know, it's stronghold. It's not going to survive the sandstorms. It's not going to survive the wind. It's just, we're here. We need protection. Therefore, the name of the place is called Succoth, which means booth. He's in the area of Ammon right now. On the west side of the Jordan River, where he is, is the children of Ammon. That's the children of Lot, one of his daughters. Now, between 17 and 18, he crosses the Jordan. Now, this is way north of Jericho. I should take a look at that map again, really. But from where we are now in Succoth, I mean, it's almost completely straight west. And Jacob came to Shalom. That's Salem. A city named Salem, which is peace. Here, Shalom means safe. A city of Shechem. He's not really going to be safe there. 
which is in the land of Cana. He's now crossed the Jordan River. He is where he's supposed to be, and God had crossed him over to a place where it says, safe. The Jew is safe in their land, according to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's safe. He's over the Jordan River. And when the, he came from Panoram, that's where Laban was, that's marked on your map, and pitched his tent. So he's a tent dweller. He's a common plain man, the Bible says, when we first introduced to him and his brother's a hunter. Tents were their, were their homes. Now, Shechem. It's interesting. He's gone from Laban to Shechem. Shechem is a city of refuge of the children of Ephraim, the children of Joseph. It's a Levitical city. And it's a place where Joseph is finally buried. Isn't that interesting? The one that had his bones kept in, in Egypt until you come out and get in the promised land and is buried right here where Jacob comes over. And if a murderer accused of killing somebody who did it accidentally or had no guilt in his mind to kill anybody, the axe head fell off the axe and killed somebody. He cut down a tree and accidentally landed and killed somebody. This is one of the places they were to run to and stay until the death of the high priest. It's a safe place. And this is where Jacob is. And he bought, he bought a parcel of field. So this land, another title deed recorded in the Bible that Shechem, a parcel of land, belongs to Jacob. We've already seen Joseph, uh, Abraham buy a parcel of land for a burial ground. We see Jacob buying the land. This is a Bible recording that that land is Israel's land. And there are few and several, I don't know how many completely yet, title deeds that are recorded that you could take to a court of law that can outstand the United Nations and say this is a legal document to say that land belongs to this person where he has spread his tent so we just read that Shalom that's where he spread his tent that land he bought at the hand of the children of Hamor Shechem's father so this land is named for a, a son of Hamor for a hundred pieces of money as he even told you how much it cost so there's money given. That's a purchase. That's a you just got yourself a receipt of Jacob. As much as you grab a receipt from a grocery store. And if you need to prove that you bought it, the security guard that stopped you at the door, here's my receipt. I bought that item. It's the security guard. Jacob, what makes you think this is your? This is my receipt. I bought it. Thank you. And he erected there an altar. And called it Elah, Elah, Ahol Israel, which the meaning is God. See the E, E L, the God, E L, of Israel. The God, the God of Israel. That new name that he's been given in chapter 32. In a land where he's supposed to be, he sets up an altar and says, God, the God, here we are in the land of Israel. I'm away from Laban. I'm away from Esau. I am no longer on the other side of the Jordan River. I am in the promised land where you told Abraham, Isaac, and you told me. But he's not where he's supposed to be, really. And we'll see, Lord willing, the next chapter that gets him moving. 